Hey guys, how's it going? So today I figured we'll swap out the UV sterilizer in the 10 foot fish tank. This is the new model. I have the older one. The older one has started to fail. It started to crack in the center. I'll show you guys in a bit. But basically, we're going to take the old one out, put the new one in, and see how well it does. Stay tuned. So I've just got this today in the port, and it's just in time because mine has started to fail in the center. So the instructions are just one sheet of paper. So that should be easy to go over. The foam has ripped and we have the hose tails, which I can see three of them, which is quite nice. You only need two, but this does come with an option to have three if you need it. It's always good to have a spare. Oh, and there's no plug. What is it with stuff these days? And that's come up with a plug. So ours is the CW36, which is 36 watts. I did want the 55 watt. That would be a better size than my tank. UV lamp should be changed at the beginning of a new season. Unscrew, remove the glass tube, insert new. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I did check online, and this is perfectly fine, allegedly for marine fish tanks and tropical. But it is a bit worrying that it does not actually mention anywhere on the box all the instructions that it is reef safe salt water safe basically so i guess time will tell so the way i use this in my tank is these are blocked off and we have the water feed coming in the bottom and coming out the top so remove this black and plate Now these have rubber gaskets, so I am not going to use Teflon tape on the threads, we should be okay. I'll need two of these. It comes with three of them, so I'll just need, we can go back in the bag. I only need this fitting, I don't need the smaller one so we can cut this off, so let's remove that and then these are ready to be installed. So regarding quality, the wire is good quality wire, that is okay, the connection at the top here, that is perfectly fine, but what I don't like, there's a lot of scratches from factory, we have excess glue here and here, but one thing that is alarming is the mould itself, can you see? where it's been joined. Looks okay on that side. But if you come around here, can you see how raised that edge is? And also on the threads, can you just see that join? I mean, that is, that is pretty bad. The plastic, it feels awful. It feels exactly like the plastic that's on my current one, which is worrying because I'm replacing it because of the poor plastic. These moulds, for example, as you can see, the moulds themselves are not even even. You can see here this side's almost twice as thick as that side. One issue I had with my current one is this ring here. Basically, this sits over this and applies pressure on this lip, which then seals the connection. What happened on both of mine is it actually cracked right at the top here. It actually sheared in half. For example, I've got all these horse tails laying about because I've had to replace these. So what I did is I went out and picked up some better quality ones and I used the ring of this one on the current ones. So let's get these horse tails installed. Now it's pretty straightforward. Your horse tail basically goes on there. This gasket goes in between and this ring 
put it on place. Apparently this is counterclockwise, so basically turn it towards me, it should. Wow, that is that is tight. There's a button here. Is that a lock button? Or is it the power on and off? I thought that was a power button. I wonder if that is a Basically, you've got to push this in, hold this down, and twist at the same time. So you, you need kind of free hands, which isn't ideal. The reason I took this off is because the screw goes on the top here. So when I fix it to the wall, we're going to have to fix it up first in place, and then put this on. Actually, that, that's not going to work. I'm not going to have the room to do that. What we could do is leave this one loose. And we could slide it up under the, the screw and then screw this one in. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. So this seems okay. This seems intact. It's a pretty decent quality size bulb. It's got a watertight seal at the top. And you've got the O-ring. Gotta make sure that's back in place before we turn the thing on. So I think the next step is the plug. I didn't have a black plug which was not a safety plug now the fact that these plugs are right near the water I wanted a sealed safety plug I didn't want to just put a generic plug a plug like this for example I wouldn't trust that near a fish tank because it is not sealed at the bottom water could get in there and you do not want that so I just use this plug here which already has the cable installed and connected the cable here using solder and then heat shrink so that is nice and fully waterproof and ready to go. So let's just give this a quick test. Okay, so we have no light. I wonder if it's a safety mechanism inside there. This has to be actually in the unit for it to turn on. I don't think pick this up on camera, but there's quite a bit of oil. Lots of oily fingerprints on the actual tube. Just get some alcohol. Basically just clean all off. It probably won't cause any issues. It'll just be the lubricant that they put on the O-rings. This one here for example and the one inside here. Which water is in contact with anyway. That's why I put it on there so the water doesn't leak past it. So it's not going to cause any damage. But why I'm in here, I thought why not. Goes in like so. Ah, oh, right, yes, there's a peg here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's a peg just there. That needs to stick into this section here for the light to turn on. I'm hoping either that or I've got a broken bulb. This should clip in like so. Turn it on. Let's shut off the lights to the garage. That was not the UV, that is my battery charger. The UV sterilizer, you can just make it out that it's actually on and working. 
So let's go get this plumbed into the system, power on, and see how well it does. This is a bit of a mess. Let's get all these out. So this here is the original UV sterilizer. As you can see, what I was talking about before, is this light here shown through. That should not be shown through there. Basically, this should be sealed and what will eventually happen is that will basically rip through and water will start coming out of this seal. This is the water coming back to the system and it comes across into the tank. It tees off into the sterilizer, so let's turn that off. And the water will stop here. And it should stop flowing, which it has. Let's get the water out. Basically the water from this line here, inside the cylinder, and then up to here. So that is a water level at the mesh that will eventually go down. So it keep coming out until it comes out of here. Should label these really. Uh, this one? Nope. This one? Yep. Lovely. That should be much better, so we'll put this one on instead, I think, because that one is for the bin. So I'm using a pond hose, so I should really have a clamp like this, which gets in between the ribs. But unfortunately, I don't have one smaller than this, so that's what I have to do. So this is kind of where I want to put it, but the problem we've got is this needs to be higher than the tank it goes back to. If I move this down, it may back siphon, and then the power cut will back siphon back through the UV. So it has to be this height, which means this is too high. As you can see, the previous one came down into here, but there's no way I could bend that like that. That's just not possible. It's going to kink back there and it won't even flow water. So I do have a spare elbow and some hose. So I'm going to remove that hose. Hopefully this should be the correct size. I know it's too big here, but I've got a smaller hose. Try and get this guy in like that. And then run into here, and we should be okay. So as you can see, it comes down to the top, and then it's a straight 90 degree elbow here. Then that will plug in nice and smoothly there. And at the top, it's all lined up also. Put a screw at the very top here. And you slide that up, that'll catch it. And then I'll put a screw at the bottom, and that'll hold that in place. So we'll put the top back on. Slide this up, put the screw in. 
so that is in place and it is not going anywhere so the next step is to put these pipes on so put a hose clamp on slide this over tighten it down same down here what is that plug Is an absolute mess under here. Where's it going? I think it's that light. <laughs> There's a rare light back here. So let's first say that light is not going to be getting used. That's that's pretty crowded. <laughs> so we had a change of plan. This basically would be here, however, the valve was catching the side of the sump. Now, I could empty the sump, which is not a nice thing to do, push it along a couple inches, but to be fair, all this is is a shut off valve so that I can service the UV filter. The UV filter gets serviced once a year, so basically when I normally do this, all electrics get turned off anyway, so it's not really doing much. I've not really ever used this, but it's just always nice to have the pipe itself just goes down to an elbow then into the UV sterilizer this is all nice and tight it will travel up and then back out across down to a tank at the very back there you can see that probably not as you can see just push that button and the whole thing just twists and then locks back in place must have been stuck from the factory, I guess, but now it's nice and loose. It's much easier to service. So the next step is to turn this on. The water comes out the sump, like I say, across and down. There's a high probability of leakage on these plastic threads, top and bottom, and possibly here, because as I say, you're supposed to have the correct clamps for this ribbed hose and these are kind of like a makeshift clamp. They've worked in the past, so this should be okay, but it could leak. Well, it could leak from any of these, to be fair. So I'll just watch out, and if it does leak, tighten them up and hopefully be good to go. You can hear the water coming out the other end. So it's been about an hour, just came back out, and we have zero leaks. I think it seems to be okay. You run the, the mains along this tubing into the sockets up there, and plug it in, turn it on, and that should be it. So why I do all that, off camera, I'm gonna pull all this out, give it a clean, sort these wires out, give this a clean, and get back to you so I'm finished. Hopefully it'll look a lot better than it looks right now. So this is that floodlight I was telling you guys about. It's, uh, I'm not even quite sure how that's corroded that badly. Maybe because it wasn't plugged in. But that thing's junk. I think it actually does work. But we won't be using that. I can go on the bin. So this is the original unit that I had on the system. I won't lift it up because it's still got some water in and it's pretty nasty. I can hear it sloshing around, I don't want that all over the bench. But basically, this is uh, Jabawa, I think you say it as, PU55. I've had it for five years, it's, it's did the job. But it did leak in the past. These strips here, this is actually sealant. I taped it off to make it look a bit neater than it actually should look. <laughs> but basically I taped it off and put a thick layer of sealant on all these joints because these started leaking water. That has actually held up over the years, but as you guys seen in the footage, it was starting to leak life through. If light's coming through, it's just a matter of time before this starts leaking because light never used to come through. So that just shows me that from the inside, it's starting to wear out. So the plastic inside is probably really thin. And one day I will come back and water will be just gushing out of this. And basically this runs off my return pump. So if this was to leak, that would not stop the, the tank from basically pumping out all the water. So that would not be a good day. These are the original hose tails that came with the system. I quite like them. The fact that they're transparent, it makes it easy to actually identify whether or not the light is on. 
but one thing I do not like is these sails. These are terrible. In theory, they should be great. Basically, put the sail over and then tighten it down. But what happened the first time I used it, can you see there's a nick? Basically, it was the start of the threads on here that actually dug into the seal. And you just gotta make sure when you put it back on, that lines up with that section, otherwise you're gonna get a leak. The other issue, what I was telling you guys about, if you can see there, I don't know if you can see it on camera. Not sure if that is gonna help. Can you see there's light coming through? Basically, what I was telling you guys before, it's starting to separate at the top. Any movement in this horse tail puts pressure on this and then cracks it. Then you get a leak. Not ideal. What I didn't realize is that this one had an external ballast, which is, uh, I totally forgot about. The new one's obviously built into the top, kind of like that. But I quite like the idea of it all being in one unit. This is a 55 watt bulb. My current system is only a 36 watt, I believe. This one's did the job over the years, never had an issue with it. So this one's doing it. And this one is apparently more effective and uses less power. I'm all for that. One of these you take off and it separates the unit so you get the bulb out. Now, I had an issue with this as well because it started leaking. So I can't remember what I did. I think I put some silicone around the joint before I secured it down. But it's just a bad design. There's, there's way too many places for this thing to leak. Now that is pretty disgusting. It's lined with some sort of waterproof membrane, I guess you can probably call it. It's It's got a grit texture to it, but if you rub it, comes off black. Now, I guess it's like some sort of waterproof paint that they put on. And what happened last time is the paint itself on them seams must have faded away. And I've sealed it and it's been okay, but I think basically the UV light, it just eats away at that paint. I don't think it's, it's held up very well because the UV light's obviously degrading it. And every time I change a bulb, I get this sooty disgusting water out so that is the uv bulb that is in this system still works nothing wrong with it perfectly fine but it's a year old so after a year you're supposed to replace it but with this the whole thing's going to bin i may keep this it's a ballast you don't need them these days it's led technology this kind of stuff's kind of old-fashioned technology but you never know it may come in handy it's a 55 watt ballast so i think you guys can agree that looks a lot better everything's all tucked away nice and neatly power supplies for the lights are up here we got the cables everything all tucked away in the back there here is the actual uv unit itself it's nice and firm against the, the back here all the connections are perfectly fine i've checked for leaks i've actually put two clamps on this i just don't trust this rib Pause. You can see with this kind of hose you get a perfect nice tight seal. With this, I just don't like the idea of using one clamp, so I'll put two on. And deep down there is the inlet for the UV, as I've pointed out before. Travels up and then back out the top. So I've tied all this up, it's nice and organised. It's been, it's been many years since it looked as tight as this, I must be honest. This shelf was already here, but I used to have a fish tank on here which is what that light was at the back which is all rusty and corroded so i got some wood out of the garage and just built some basic legs just to double the storage capacity i get this guy running as well tonight it's been a long time since i give the fish some live food i've also given this section of the tank a nice clean this is my sump and refugium we have my skimmer basically the water comes down these drain lines and into the back of the sump here but then fills into this chamber which is then processed through the skimmer which then goes through to the algae section which then goes to the return this reactor is fed off the return pump so once the water is getting fed back up to the actual system 
that is teed off back here and it runs down this hose into the reactor. The reactor then dumps its contents back into the start of the sump. And this is the last section of the tank, which you guys have not seen yet. And this is my second holding system, which is fed from the UV sterilizer. And it's pretty dark, I'll uh, get the light. So I put this in a few years ago. Basically, I was gonna be looking into getting some maybe seahorses or bream fish or kind of, well, I wasn't too sure what I was gonna do. So I basically picked up the system, drilled a hole, the UV sends the filtered water down this hose into this inlet, circles this tank here, and then siphons back out into the start of the sump. So at the minute, basically I've just got a heater and I have a pump over there to circulate in the water. It's, it looks pretty dirty, but it's actually really clean. This is the same water that's actually in the system above and the sump, it's all in the same system. So although it looks quite dirty and quite disgusting in there, it's actually perfectly fine. Got some sponges growing in the back there, which is quite nice to see. In fact, the bacteria, the life that's actually in this system, it would be a shame to actually remove it. It really is helping the filtration of the tank itself. So as you guys have just seen in the sump down here, I actually am growing some algae. It's not enough area to grow algae that fills up in a few days. So what I'm doing is putting some baffles into this section here and growing separate algae, getting a nice big life in the top and basically making a free foot refugium. I might actually start bringing this onto my channel more often. There's a lot more stuff I can do with this system. Like I say, I'm going to be upgrading the refugium down there. So that's a video to come in the future. I might be getting some newer lights installed and there's a few bits down below I want to also replace. I've had this tank now for five years so some bits are starting to get quite old. So they're coming towards the end of life and I think, like, like the UV sterilizer for example, things don't last forever. So there's a few things I might do with this system. If you guys are interested in seeing more footage on this system then please let me know in the comments. Time will tell, but for the price I'm really happy. So I think we've got this one here guys. So like always, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.